Attention WFIA members, the virtual 2024 WFI convention will be this fall from September 13th through September 15th, 2024. Scheduled to appear are the world's strongest man, Ken Patera, the world's most dangerous announcer, Gary Michael Capetta, Bill Apton, and just recently signed the High Flyers, Jumpin' Jim Brunzel and Greg Gagne. And folks, there's more coming on board. So run, don't walk to your keyboard. Get on that computer. Check the WFIA.org website and our Facebook page to see when these guys are going to be scheduled and their prices. Folks, if you are not a WFIA member, you will be paying an additional fee. So go to the WFIA.org today and register, become a member, and enjoy the podcast. Welcome to another edition of Bumps and Thumps, the talk of wrestling. I'm Brian Ferguson. Folks, we're in for a real great treat today. We have... The owner promoter of SICW, Mr. Herb Simmons. Herb, thank you for coming back on the show. It's so good to see you. Well, it's my pleasure. Um, anytime I can uh, uh, be with you and uh, talk uh, wrestling, uh, it, it makes my night. I cleared my schedule tonight and I said, uh, I'm going to spend some time with Brian and we're going to have some fun. Oh. I love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I want to recap a little bit. It's been a little while since you're on here last, and you have been quite a busy, busy fella. And uh, you have coming up, you run SICW. You've got a great promotion there in uh, the Southern Illinois Championship Wrestling. How's that going for you? Uh, and you know, it's, it's, it's fun. And, uh, and that's, I've said, as long as it continues to so, so stay fun, we're going to do it. Uh, but uh, we've been busy, you know, our monthly shows, uh, the TV, um, uh, is a different animal when it comes to wrestling, you know, uh, so we, we do that each month and, uh, yeah. like, uh, we'll, uh, we'll do our monthly house show. And then the next day I hold the boys over on that Sunday and, we tape uh, four one-hour shows that we air uh, on YouTube and Facebook and uh, Intrigue TV out of St. Louis. So uh, it's it's a, it's a different animal, you know, right in the TV yeah. and uh, uh, getting uh, getting the storylines together, which uh, uh, not too many uh, promotions do that. So, right now, you I mean you've been doing this I believe for over fifty years, if I if I remember correctly. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. 51, uh, this, uh, this fe past February, uh, 51 years. And, you know, I, I watch your SICW show on YouTube, uh, cause I'm a few hours away, so I don't, I don't get the channel out of St. Louis, but it's always such a great, it just brings me back to the days of, you know, it's not the, all the eye candy and the, the, the uh, how do you say the, fireworks and popping and all that it is just down to earth good old-fashioned wrestling where you got the announcers you've got uh the guys doing the interviews and stuff just like it used to be and that's what i love the most is it's not all that glitz and glamour and, and stuff and and you know i it was probably a challenge for you at first because a lot of people are used to that glitz and glamour what's what's that was that kind of a process for you to get that going no, or did you no just... no it, no it's just you know that's the way i grew up and that's the way uh my uh, late great friend larry matasek uh I, I used to love to go over to the studio in st louis at kplr and uh when he got in later on in years to do the uh post editing uh you know that was always his uh, favorite part of it is putting it all together uh, and, and, uh, each and every week seeing it on television and, uh, sit there and he'd say, man, just think we did that, you know, cause, uh, like I said, it takes a different, uh, different spect, uh, a set of eyes to catch yeah. the right thoughts. And, um, 
you know, hats off to the cameraman and all of that back in the day. Uh, and the same way with my yeah. guys now, you know, uh, you, you, yeah. you, you want that shot. You want the people who do tune into it, who maybe can't make it to the uh, shows to feel like they're right there. And, uh, and that's what we try to do. You know, our interviews, uh, doing them at ringside and, yeah. uh, you know, the, the promos that are done. Um, I think it gives the boys a lot of, uh, experience. Um, but you know, we've got fans from all over the world to watch that thing on YouTube. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, um, a realist to the fact that I know there aren't uh, people going to fly up here from California or, uh, from wherever, um, hundreds of miles away to come to one monthly show, but it's actually right. given boys in the locker room exposure, uh, getting, uh, getting them known out there. And it works because I've got guys that are working down in Tennessee, working down with our good friend, yeah. Jason Jones, uh, at, uh, uh his uh, operation down there. And, you know, we transfer guys back and forth and that's what the territory yeah. days were like. It was, I remember. Yeah. I, when, uh, back in March, here in Springfield, you guys were down here uh, with a few of your guys, Attila Khan, and one of my favorite guys. I love that guy. Uh, he's one of my favorite wrestlers uh, out of your out of your promotion there, and uh, been around a long time. You know, he was yeah, he, my race, yeah, yeah. And, and then yeah. you know, uh, they don't get much better than that. You know, I got guys like him and superstar Steve Fender that uh, were yep. were uh, the uh, guys that uh, harley took underneath his wings along with you know trevor murdoch and people like that and uh mm -hmm. just uh, look at them all now they've they've all all succeeded you know yeah oh yeah uh your guys you know and i'm not i'm being like this because i watch your show and your show is so like i said it's real it it, it brings out that old school mentality and I know you talk about was uh, Jason Jones out of Mid States. He has a YouTube now that he uh, has been putting out a product, and you two uh, have the same pretty much mindset. You know, you the ring, the the people at the ringside, the interviews, and it's just so it's so missed, I guess, because you have these the big promotions that do the three hour shows. Well hour and 45 minutes of that is they're talking in the ring for 20 minutes or they're uh there's a commercial you right. know, or whatever you guys are on it with you know yes you have commercials but i mean you, you uh, it's st louis station but i mean it's not 20 minutes talking it's like two minutes and then you're then you're in there you're going oh. did you ever wonder what could have been with the AWA had things gone differently? Had their fortunes gone differently? Had certain wrestlers not left and perhaps more money would have been at the disposal of the Ganyas? Well, wonder no further. You can go to Brad Drake's YouTube channel and experience the 1987 Supermod for yourself. As Brad Drake starts off in May 1987, along with Greg Ganya, Baron Von Rotschke, Vern Ganya himself, Nick Bockwinkel, Larry Zabisco, Kurt Hennig, and a slew of others as he plays and saves the AWA. Well, that's, you know, somebody asked me about the, uh, do I watch the local, I mean, the uh, uh, Monday Night uh, yeah. War and all of this. And I, I, I hear about two months ago, I tried and uh, yeah. uh, I watched about 40 minutes of it. And it was about uh, 30 minutes of commercials. And, uh, I said, no, I can't take this. I mean, I, 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 yeah. I just, uh, but you know, if the fan, if that's what they like, uh, more power to them, it's just not my cup of tea. I mean, I, yeah. uh, I, that I was, I was brought up old school and, yeah. uh, uh, you know, you get in the ring and then, yeah, you got to have your promos and you got to have your beat yeah. downs in order to set up those, uh, future matches. So, uh, right. um, it's like at the house show. I mean, I stand at the door at night when the fans are leaving and uh, they'll tell me, they'll say, man, uh, Herb, just about the time we thought we had it figured out, you pull a rabbit out of your hat. And uh, so, well, that, you know, I know we're doing something yeah. right. Yeah. And that's it. You know, uh, it's not predictable on yours, on your, on your uh, shows and, and 
you think you got it, like they say, and then, like you said, yeah, and that's the best part of it is that you keep the fans wanting to come back, wanting to see what's going to happen, and not, yeah, I know what's going to happen. Sometimes they probably do, but for the most part, sure. they're like, is this going to happen, or is this going to go a different direction? Well, and the, and then the other thing is the, the proof in the pudding is is when the fans start sending you messages saying, "Hey, why don't you think about this? Why not? You know, so and so needs to have this happen to him. You know, they start trying to uh, put the matches together for you, and, and you're thinking <laughs> they are really into this, and 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 that's yeah. what it's all about. You know, it's uh, yeah. it's when they come and and and. And I go to very few other promotions uh, unless I'm invited. Uh, and I, I that purposely because I, as soon as I show up at somebody's promotion right away, it's, oh, Herb's are trying to scout our talent and all that. Well, I don't have to scout talent. I mean, I, I get calls every week from around the globe of people yeah. wanting to come to SICW. Uh, but Jason, if he, you know, if I go down to his, you know, he rolls out the red carpet. Of course, that's just the type of guy he is. And, yeah, uh, he is. Yeah. Uh, or down to Scotty Z, he's at Newbreed. You know, mm -hmm. I go there and when he asks and, uh, or, you know, he'll come up to my shows. And, uh, um, but, but again, it, it's, um, when I when I go there, I, I'm looking at the fans, and mm -hmm. uh, you can tell the diehard fans, and you can tell the ones that are just there. I say there's, I, I, I've always said there's two type of fans. There's the wrestling fans, and then there's the wrestlers fan. And yeah. the wrestling fans are the ones that are there through thick and thin, and they can tell you every match. And and when they're leaving, they they remembered each and every move. And the wrestlers fan is the guy that's coming to see you and me fight because they're friends with one of ours. And if they happen to yeah. put us on first, well, we're probably leaving after that first match. You know, we go go grab a beer somewhere else. But uh, the wrestling fan is the one that uh, that I want because I want them there to buy yeah. into it uh, from top to bottom. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I will tell you, like your promotion, Jason's, you know, Mid States, New Breed, they're full. They're always yeah. full. There, there's not. 20 people there there it, it's a full house it's oh yeah you know, i mean i think few jason, hundred, yeah i think yeah. jason springfield like 17 consecutive sellouts and and that's yeah. not a small place and uh no. it just blew my mind and uh which is great he, he that that just tells me he's got a good product and uh he's he got guys there you know guys like gary graham and people like that to go out there and bust their butts and uh uh, and of course, if you ask Stephen E, uh, he's the reason why all of them are there, you know, <laughs> so, but what a guy he is. That, that, that's a story for another day, you know, yeah. wants to buy SICW, he's going to rule the world, you know? So, yeah. 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 Stephen E. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I want to talk a little bit, if we could, her, your upcoming event here, uh, about three weeks, uh. Don't remind me. <laughs> Fan Fest 2, you know, the Bruiser Brody Memorial. I was at the one last year, the Fan Fest, the first one, and I thought last year you had done yourself. I mean, you had, like, the who's who. And then this year, you've topped yourself even more. How you've done that, I don't know, but you have from what I've seen. And... I got to ask you, uh, like, how do you get these people to, to commit? Yeah, I'll be there and I'll, and I'll do it. Cause you've got, I'll just name, I'll name a few of them off. You got Dr. D Dave Schultz. You've got Tito Santana. You've got Medusa. You've got Bill Apter. Uh, you know, there's, I think there's a probably about what over 50 of people going to be there. I know for sure. Stan mm -hmm. Hansen's coming back this year, the Lariat. Well, uh, the think... High Flyers. Hello, everyone. This is Brian Ferguson, the host of Bumps and Thumps, the talk of wrestling. I want to tell you about a new podcast out called Fouls Count Anywhere. It is a classic pro wrestling pro podcast that brings you the legends of wrestling with true wrestling fans Chris DiCarlo and Charlie Turner. 
They bring on guests that are legends in this business, as well as wrestlers of today, promoters, referees, you name it. They have them on there, folks. And I encourage you to listen to them. If you're on YouTube, watch them. They drop every Saturday. They have their podcast. They drop it in the afternoon. So look forward to that podcast coming out. Falls Count Anywhere podcast with Chris DiCarlo and Charlie Turner. Folks, you will not be disappointed. I guarantee it. And enjoy the podcast. Yeah. Go ahead. Stan, Stan is probably not going to be there. He's uh, he's okay. not doing a lot of stuff away from home right now. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, and, and I hated that. But, you know, I, I tell these guys, um, you know, uh, life is first and, uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you, you got to take care of that. And, uh, exactly. so trying to stay as close to home as possible. And, uh, but, uh, but Stan's a great friend and, yeah. but you, you're right. We've got a, we've got a, um, a, a great collection again this year. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's, uh, how much Nick always said that if you're going to do something over, you got to do it at least as good as the first time, if not better. And so I think we've uh, we've topped that, and yes, uh, and it is a uh, it's a logistical nightmare. But that uh, you know to answer your question, you know I I want to contribute that I guess to having uh, the friendship with a lot of these people over yeah. the years. Uh, I think that. Uh, uh, when I say that uh, people like Sam uh, Muchnick and Larry Matasek and Bruiser Brody uh, introduced me to so many of the who's who in this business. And the one thing that and I keep referring to Sam, but he was the guy that I sit underneath the learning tree. And uh, I've, I've taken everything that he taught Larry and I and I've, I've comprehended that all these years. Uh, and one of the things was, is you, you know, you always treat the boys right and they'll treat you right. And yeah. so when I call uh, a Jerry Briscoe up or, you know, I call a Haku, uh, you know, it's not a question. They know that uh, one, it's going to be a legit operations. Uh, yeah. the, as you heard stories, you know, in this business, there are people out there that want to be in the promotion business and they, they, they don't know how to get uh, uh, out of the batter's box. And uh, yeah. I think after all of these years, I have shown that uh, through the thick and the thin and the good and the bad, uh, yeah. that, that I'm still there. And um, they, they have, a, you know, the one, last year was the first one that's ever been done in St. Louis uh, to that magnitude. And, okay. uh, and you know, the, uh, where you had 53 of the legends come in and, uh, yeah. The, uh, the only other one that was done was back. Uh, there was a gentleman named Colonel Buck Robley, uh, and he worked with Larry Matasek and I. Uh, but on that, that card, there was only like 22 uh, legends that uh, was brought in for that show at the St. Charles uh, Convention Center. But they didn't have wrestling. You know, they didn't have the Bruiser Brody Memorial. Uh, mm -hmm. They surely didn't have the Bill App. The Bill After was there, uh, but he yeah. was doing it at that time. But uh and, and that's what's kind of unique about this, uh, speaking of doing it bigger and better, you know, last year, if you remember, was just a Saturday. And uh, yeah. so we had it, the Bill Lafter's one man show for this Friday night on May 17th. And uh, yeah. Bill yeah. does a tremendous uh, one man show. And uh, I like the way he puts it out there. It's not your typical uh, show or just sitting around talking. I mean, uh, yeah. He does, he know, he does his impressions and, uh, yeah. you know, he'll do some trivia questions and, uh, and the good thing is a lot of the boys will be in Friday and uh, a lot of them yeah. will be that night. Uh, yeah. We, we have made it clear that you have to have a ticket to get into that event because it's a room that seats. I think as of today, I think we're down to about 29 tickets left for that. But, okay. uh, but again, you know, there won't be any taking pictures of the, the guys or girls because, you know, you know, there are right. certain fans that come and hang out at these places that don't want to buy a ticket and they want to catch the yeah. guys. You know, they'll go out and hang out at the airport waiting for them sometimes, you know. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I mean, that's what Saturday's for. Saturday, I want yeah. the guys, and this is kind of a VIP party uh, Friday night. I want the, Bill to have a good uh, good turnout, have a good show, and then uh, yeah. everybody kind of hang around. And 
but I want the guys to kind of let their hairs down and, uh, and mm -hmm. relax and then get ready for Saturday. Yeah. I, I tell you last year, you know, I got there Friday and you know, we talked about that before we came on you, you were running around pretty, pretty busy. And then I met a lot of the, uh, guys that came in, uh, just super nice, you know, talking to you, like some of those guys talk to me, like I've known them for 20 years, mm -hmm. you know, uh, very, uh, fan friendly. And, you know, and again, I wasn't like the, some fans where they, you know, want a picture right away. They want to autograph this and that that's for the next day. Right. And I, and I, and you know, I respect that and I totally understand that. So of course I just intermingled with them and talked to them for a little bit, ask them how the, the, you know, this and that and stuff, because I know the next day, you know, they're going to talk to you for a few minutes, but you know, there's a lot of sure. people going to be there. You gotta, you gotta roll through. So, uh, but I really enjoyed it last year. Uh, it was, I, I, I can't even describe it. It was, I was just on cloud nine. I didn't want to leave. You know, I had to, I had to leave, uh, Saturday night, you know, uh, cause we had, it was mother's day weekend and I had to go back home, which thank goodness I only live a few hours away. Right. So it wasn't too bad for me. Uh, yeah. and this year, you know, you got the after show on Friday night, Saturday all day, and then you're going to have the matches. Uh, so I am like really excited for this and, and uh, I, I know you got a lot of the who's who and those friendships, I guess my, uh, you know, your card, I, I'm expecting a, you know, you always put on a good show as it is, but I, I know you're going to put on a, especially a really good one because of all the, the legends that are going to be there. I'm sure it's going to be one heck of a card. Hey everyone, this is Brian Ferguson. I want to tell you about a great book written by my good friend, Mr. George Shire. It's called Minnesota's Golden Age of Wrestling from Vern Gagne to the Road Warriors. George dives deep into the Golden Age of Wrestling starting with the 1950s, talking about Luthez, Vern Gagne, Wilbur Schneider, and many others, and goes all the way into deep into the AWA and into the 1980s, ending with the tag team domination of the Road Warriors. Now, this book includes photos that, of George's personal collection, as well as programs and sports facts that was published for many years. So go to Amazon today or the Minnesota Historical website and get this book as soon as you can. And folks, enjoy the podcast. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it, it will be, I can, I can assure you that because yeah. this is kind of like our granddaddy of them all, you know, um, um, of course it's, we've always done the Bruiser Brody Memorial every May, yep. uh, tying yep. it in with the celebration of the years of wrestling at the chase that it stayed on the air. And I am so fortunate and lucky to have a relationship with Barbara Goodish, uh, yeah. who allowed me to continue to uh uh keep uh Brody's uh, name alive and that's kind of a yeah. pledge I made to her many years ago and yeah. and uh, not only this year is you know Barbara coming in but uh, uh, uh Brody's uh, sister Gail is coming in yes and uh Gail is another just uh, another princess um we've we've been uh Uh, with Gail before her and good friends uh, over the years and they communicate yeah. through social media. And so yeah. I'm looking really excited about Gail coming, but you know, then when you throw in the Darla Stags and, uh, yeah. uh Pam Morrison, uh, you know, uh, you know, that's the a queens. Who right there. You know, yeah. The queens the queens. yeah. And, uh, so I, I'm excited about that, but the Bruiser Brody Memorial is always special to my heart because of my relationship I had with Frank and, uh, um, I, 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 people just have no idea how close we were, uh, outside just the business world. And, uh, I mean, I, yeah. I miss him, uh, every, every day I, when I say literally, you know, him and Larry, I, I think to myself, if they were still with me, uh, what SICW would be doing, uh, Frank would be about 77 years old. And, uh, but, uh, he would, uh, 
he'd have still been involved one way or the other yeah. with his connections and everything. And uh, yeah. he helped me out so much with connections uh, and that relationship would have carried on. And, uh, yeah. uh, um, and of course, uh, um, I hope that uh, they're looking down and watching. I, I know, I know Larry and Sam's probably scratching her head and saying, boy, he's one crazy SOB because <laughs> when you're oh. trying to pull this many guys together, um, and it is a, it is a nightmare. Uh, you know, if you remember last year, we had trouble at the, uh, hotels. It was hot in there. If you remember. I and do remember. Yeah, it was hot. Everybody, yeah. everybody thought the uh, air conditioning was, you know, I, I didn't find out until actually, you know, a couple of hours into that thing that yeah. the um, uh, maintenance worker had it set on heat. Uh, uh, and he was, uh, and, uh, but then after you had all those people in there, then it took another couple hours for it to cool down. But, but yeah. even with that, I mean, there were still people that just had one yeah. heck of a time. Uh, oh, yeah. People to this day still tell me that they liked it because it was put together. There wasn't a lot of hustle and bustle, uh, yeah. you know, with having the ring up in there. Uh, mm -hmm. It kind of gave the atmosphere. They was using it for a backdrop uh, for photos. Yeah. In Victoria, they, you know, uh, they yeah. really did a great job. And Jimmy yeah. Hart. You know, and, and this year, uh, Jimmy and uh, Medusa is going to kind of uh, uh, co-host it for me. I, I, we're going to have better uh, PA yeah. system. And we got a speaker in each corner that's going to be in there. So you'll be able to hear from yeah. one end of the room to the other. And uh, because, you know, you give Jimmy Jimmy Hart a, uh, a microphone and baby, he'll, <laughs> he'll, he'll be out there uh, selling everybody's goods for him, you know. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to the, uh, uh, I, I, I want to get it here, but I remember five, six months ago, when I first started advertising it. I thought, man, it's never going to get here. And now I'm saying, oh, slow down a little bit. I want to make sure I got all the I's not and T's crossed. And, uh, you know, I, I played the waiting game with the airlines uh, because, as you probably know, the airfares are just through the roof, you know. And, yeah, uh, they're, they're not cheap. No, it's not. And, uh, and then, you know, when you're, you're bringing in this, this many people, uh, like I said earlier, before we went on the air, it'd be nice if they were all coming from the same place and we could put them all on the yeah. same plane, but that's not yeah. going to happen. And then, and then yeah. people say, okay, well, okay, you can get them there, but they don't understand come Sunday morning, they start leaving out yeah. at 6 a.m. in the morning. So, uh, there will be no rest for my uh, son-in-law and I. Uh, or I call him my Uber driver. <laughs> there so, you go. <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, but you know, uh, you, you got to get him there and get him back out of town. Yeah. And uh, I, I hopefully the you know, uh, as I said earlier, you know, the phones. Uh, people are texting me and saying, "Hey, we're coming. Uh, yeah. We're we want to get our tickets." And I tell them, "Well, you." You, you know, you need to get your tickets early, buy them online, because that kind yeah. of speeds the process of the day. You don't have to kind of wait in line because, uh, you know, mm -hmm. if you bought them in advance, we'll have your packet made with your armbands. And uh, yep. just like uh, last year, yeah. yeah, just like last year, I think yeah. we've got I think right now we're up to about 18 vendors outside in the hallways. Oh, uh, wow. OK, yeah, that's good. Something. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the Nebraska hall of fame. Folks are going to be there with their, uh, okay. display. um, I'm really uh, excited about that. And we got a couple of uh, other podcasts. Folks are going to be there like we had last year. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, people selling their goods and, uh, uh, I, I think it's, it, I think it's going to be, uh, really good. I'm excited about the whole uh, bill after, uh, Friday night that, that show will start about seven o'clock. And yeah. uh, that's about a 90 minute show, but then that'll give folks time to kind of afterwards kind of unwind and have yeah. a, a cocktails if they want right there. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then get ready for Saturday and then we'll open up uh, bright and early. Uh, I mean, it's scheduled to open up at 10, but I'm the type right. of guy, if everybody's there, everybody's ready, I'm opening the doors yeah. and, and get them yeah. in there and let, yeah. them, let them start looking around. Uh, well, I was gonna say last year you had a line. I remember because I came down about I don't know probably nine fifteen or so, uh, and there was already a line 
foreman down the down the the hallway there uh from the desk and uh but you know it was i will say this it was a great you put on a great uh fan fest last year i thought it was top notch and i know there is some glitches but i mean it wasn't you know anything noticeable really that yeah. you know a fan would would complain about because if they did then they're just complaining to complain yeah. I thought overall it was a fantastic event. Uh, all the all the legends and all the vendors were uh, courteous and professional, and and it was it went off to me. It went off like it should have, and I know this year it'll probably be better. Uh, you got so much talent. Uh, some of these people, I mean, I haven't seen in. My gosh, probably 30 years. Like you got Wendy Richter mm -hmm. and I know she doesn't do a lot of stuff. So I know you got to be good friends with her because she does not do a lot of, of uh, shows and stuff. She just, she just, yeah. Doesn't. Yeah. And she, you know, she'll be good. And, you know, she's one of the uh, inductees into the St. Louis wrestling. Yeah, Hall of Fame. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so um, I, I'm really excited about that. I think, uh, uh, Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. And I mean, uh, uh, the yeah. entire Orton family are, is going to be there for that induction. Uh, be awesome. Just kind of read through that subliminal message there. The entire gotcha. Orton will be I there. Understand. And, uh, I understand. <laughs> it, it, uh, it, that, that's going to be great in itself right there. Yeah. Uh, so uh, <laughs> for those, because I know you get a lot of listeners, uh, but you know, yes. when you here, uh, Lalani Kai, uh, Judy Martin, yeah. uh, yes, being inducted into the Hall of Fame, and uh, and some people might say, "Well, who were they?" Well, just Google them, and you'll find out why they're being inducted into the St. Louis Wrestling Hall of Fame. Yeah. And of course, uh, uh, George Abel uh, was the uh, protege of Larry Matasek uh, as the announcer, and George okay. is. Uh, Relation is going to be there to accept the award. I'm really uh, honored uh, uh, and excited about that. And of course, uh, Harold Coppler's uh, grandson. Uh, Harold Coppler was the owner of the Chase Park Plaza Hotel. Yes. He's the gentleman that made the uh, arrangement with Sam Muchnick uh, to have wrestling at the Chase uh, on uh, Channel 11 back in 1959. And uh, Harold probably should have been in the Hall of Fame many years ago because without him and the TV, there would be no wrestling at the chase and uh, without him and Sam's handshake agreement. So I'm excited about that. Uh, but the one I'm really excited about is Bob Wharton. Bob has done so much for me. I mean, uh, he's, he runs my uh, ACE Training Academy. And uh, to, have, to have his entire family going to be there, I, I think it's uh, – uh, it says a lot. Bob's done a lot for wrestling here in St. Louis. He has. Guy was on WrestleMania one, like one, three, and five, I think. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, he was on that one. I talked to him the other night when uh, he was on the WrestleMania when uh, Muhammad Ali was a special guest referee. You know. Yeah. We yeah. Kind of talked about that, and it brought jiggled some memories for Bob, and uh, he got a kick out of that. You know. So, but yeah, yeah it's going to be exciting, and then of course. Uh, uh, you know, there's always surprises. You know, last year they surprised me at the end of the induction. Uh, Jimmy Hart was involved in that. And, uh, yeah. I mean, totally just blew my mind. I mean, uh, yeah. here I'm standing in the ring with, you know, Stan Hansen and Bob Orton and um, uh, JBL and Jerry Briscoe and uh, Wes Briscoe and Spike Uber. And, and we're, I'm, I'm so come on, let's get out of here. We got to get the show on the road. And, oh, no, no, no. We got one more award. And then they give me that award. And I mean, yeah. I'll be honest with you. It, uh, it, it was an emotional moment to be standing in there and then take a picture with all of those guys. Uh, yeah. um, it just uh, solidifies and you got them all whispering in your ear, you know, oh, Larry'd be proud of you. And Sam sure. looking down on us, you know, and yeah. so, uh, you know, St. Louis was such a great place. And, uh, yeah. and, 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 you know, I had people say, well, you know, why don't you find a hotel over here in Illinois uh, where you hold it at? And, uh, and I, you know, St. Louis kind of signifies the wrestling at the chase. Uh, yeah. I'd love to have it at the uh, Chase Park Plaza Hotel, but uh, 
again, it's, it's a very expensive uh, uh, deal there. I was fortunate this last year to do that show there on a Sunday afternoon with the grandson yeah. of the Copper family. And what yeah. a, I'll never forget that. That I mean, you talk about putting icing on the cake after all these years to say that I was able to go in there in that same room, the Coruscant room, where, you know, uh, the bruiser Luthez and uh, people like that uh, started at. And uh, and yeah. here's a little OSICW in there uh, putting on a show on a Sunday afternoon. That was the icing yeah. on the cake. Yes. Yeah. I tell you, it is so great to talk to you and, and your history you know, with Sam Mushnick and, and Larry Matisic and, and Bruiser and so many others that, you know, you have a relationship with. Um, uh, I just can't even yeah. imagine. Well, like you said, we got guys like, you know, One Man Gang uh, who yeah. hasn't done a lot. You know, he's hit, George is going to be there with us. And, uh, you know, he's been in for me before. And uh, another another great individual that when i've called him and his lovely wife uh i i just uh i i they're, they're i get her on the phone i i can talk all evening with her you know and yeah but you know and, and then the 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 regular guys that come in for me all the time haku you know a uh, great guy to be around you know and uh you know nice jimmy Valiant, jimmy valiant the boogie woogie man I mean, uh, I don't know if you've ever been around him, but boy, oh boy, you're you're in for a treat. <laughs> I haven't been around him personally. I've seen him on TV you know, quite a few years ago, yeah. but yeah, I've, I've heard he's he's pretty pretty crazy. You pretty talk wild about guy. Guy that, you know, you talk about the guy that'll take time with you know, and then Dan to yeah. be separate. Uh, you know, people like that, yeah. the Godfather. Uh, yeah. You know, I, you know, I, I, I appreciate the other vendors that help bring in a couple of these people, you know, like GT collectibles and Scott Wilder's promotion. Uh, yeah. I mean, they, they literally last May at the, uh, end of that fan fest, but uh, both of them come up to me and said, Hey, if you do another one, we're back in. And, uh, yeah. and that's the kind of relationships you want to build in this business with credible people like that, you know, uh, you know, to, to help out, you know, Coco beware. I mean, he's coming yep. in. Uh, so, it. I mean, yeah, you know, tugboats coming back. Everybody had fun, uh, with, uh, with the shock master, you know? So, yeah. uh, yeah. And, uh, the one guy I'm, uh, you know, Dr. D David Schultz, you know, I'm sure yeah, people yeah. stop talking about the slap hurt around the world. You know, the only person yeah. I can assure you who will not be there will be John Strassel. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I invited him, but when he found out Dr. D was going to be there, he declined. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but uh, lover boy, Dennis Congre, you know, he's, he's yeah. going to be there. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm, you know, Rock Riddle, uh, people like that, that uh, have made an impact, you know, and then Greg Gagne and Jumpin' Jim Brunzel. Uh, nice. There's a photo op right there, you know. So, yeah. Uh, High five, any, yeah. Any, Teddy Long and Mac Davis, you know, uh, you know great what, guys. what great guys. I mean, uh, yeah. I just uh, I love them. You know, I had Tim Starm book, but uh, my good friend Billy Corgan decided he was going to book the Crockett Cup on the same night down in uh, Texas. So Tim Starm got pulled. He, he had to go there. But uh, okay. Tim was looking forward to it. But, you know, James Beard, uh, one of the yeah. greatest referees of all time. Third uh, man. <laughs> gonna be there. Oh, I'll tell you, you know, Harvey, uh, uh, downtown Bruno uh, is gonna be there. Uh, Wonderman, yeah, Paul, Paul Roma. I mean, uh, you know, uh, what a guy, you know, and yeah. Mario Cini will be there with us. And I don't know if you remember little Cato or not. Uh, I do remember, yeah, yeah, a little Cato. Uh, I just talked to him again last week. He's he's excited, he doesn't do a lot of appearances, but uh, uh, he knew that his dad and I, his dad was lot, uh, Roger Littlebrook, uh, and he knew that I did a lot of work with him guys. And when Cato first started out, he was, uh, doing the little gimmick of, uh, uh, the karate kid. And, uh, right. That's yeah, that's right. Yeah. So with that, and of course, back in the day before him, I used the uh, cowboy Lang and little Tokyo. They were two of the regulars oh, yeah. that they would always send me. And, uh, and then of course, Roger himself, uh, actually wrestled for a lot you know and uh he always loved coming in for us because uh again he knew it was a uh there was no problems with uh with the pay and you know uh what what i told him was going to be there and 
just just one yeah. great guy i miss roger too he uh he was another one that introduced me to a lot of people in the business yeah no i uh i can't say enough about what you do um you do such a great job with your your organization and the fan fest and, and giving the fans what they want you know uh and you don't, I can't explain it, I guess, but you just are such a, and you're such a good person too, Herb. You really are. Appreciate and, that. You, know, you are. I mean, every time I've talked to you in person, you know, we always have great conversations and, and, you know, I just love the way you're, you're doing things and have done things for so many years and your influences, what we said, Sam Mushnick, Larry Matisic and, and, you know, Bruiser Brody and, uh, you know, Barbara Goodish, uh, such a sweet lady, fantastic lady, uh, had opportunity to meet her, uh, you know, a few years ago at the CAC and then again at your reunion last year and then being there again this year. And, you know, your involvement with CAC, Cauliflower Alley Club. Great organization. And, and, yeah. And you're so involved in it and you have other things on your plate too that, you know, it's just amazing that you do all of it. And you know, I know you don't get thanked enough, but I want to thank you for all you do because you do a lot and you don't probably get enough credit for what you do. So I want to say thank you very much for all you do, Herb. Well, hey everyone, this is Brian Ferguson. Fans of the AWA, you are in for a real treat. My friend Joyce Poshin has just released her book titled My Ringside Seat to the AWA. Joyce writes about her personal experiences with wrestlers such as Nick Bockwinkle, Lord Alfred Hayes, Baron Von Raschke, and others. Joyce also has published many photos from her collection that you will not see anywhere else. Order today by email at joyce.poshin at gmail.com. Payment is through PayPal. The book is only $20 plus $6 shipping and handling. International orders, please email Joyce for shipping charge. Folks, run, don't walk to your keyboard and order today and enjoy the podcast well, and i appreciate that and i want you know I, and that that's a two-way street because i i tell people like you who are sincere about what you do you have a passion just like we all do you know one of the questions that i always get a, get asked and i'm sure you've probably been guilty of when you have a guest on well how do you get into wrestling how did you get into it well yeah. i got into it as a fan you know just yep. as we still are i am still a fan to this day and uh, I don't watch the new stuff. And right. again, like I said, I want to make it clear. I had the man, the, the men and women that are out there busting their tail every day. My hat's off to them. Okay. But um, I, 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 because I was brought up in old school, that's how I will die as old school. Because yeah. I, I believe in the storylines. I believe in taking the time and these guys going out there and wrestle and not so much of the flipping and the flopping. And, uh, um, I, I think that's why you hear so many people out with injuries nowadays. Um, yeah. you know, back in the day. And of course I'm, when I bring that up to, they say, Oh, well, yeah, but you know, uh, the guys back in the day weren't doing what they're doing. No, but the back guys back in the day were working 300 days a year, 350 days a year, yeah. traveling in their cars uh, from room, hotel room or some of them sleeping in their cars because they get through with the show and they put three or four guys in a car and have to drive 300 miles to get to the next show. Uh, yeah. If you don't think that didn't take a tear on your body, you know, eating cans of tuna and the sardines and <laughs> all that stuff, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah. So, so uh, I don't want to hear about it. Wasn't that bad back in the day. It was tough. And plus, guess what? They weren't making the money that you're making these days. Right. <laughs> that's very Maybe. true yeah and, and, and so ahead, yeah it, uh, one of the names that i forgot i wanted to throw out there because uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people have asked me you how did you get him and it's abdul the butcher uh very you know, shrev yeah shrev, yeah. yeah very uh you know him and brody uh one of the oh, biggest feuds yeah. ever and will remain one of the you know i i always refer to that feud between them two like the free birds and the von erics um, yes. you know, it's, it's, it's just, people will talk about those feuds forever, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and Brody and, 
uh, uh, Abby had some great matches for me. And of mm-hmm. course, people would say, well, yeah, you know, but if you saw one, you saw them all. Well, that may be true, but I guarantee you the, 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 crowd, the crowd that was watching them uh, each and every time that I had them in town or wherever I would have them at they always went home happy. And, uh, and that was my thing with, uh, Brody, uh, you know, I can hear him now. What do you want, big boy? What do you want tonight? And I'd always say, send him home happy. And, uh, boy, he he never disappointed. I mean, him and, 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 and that was the same way when I called Abby and said, look, we're, cause I've had him in before for the Brody Memorial. I had him and mm-hmm. the one last time I had him, I had uh, Charlie Fez, uh, Lou Fez is why I would have in yeah. and Barbara Goodish on that show. And, but when I called and told him we were doing the, uh, this Brody uh, Memorial again and, um, uh, the uh, fan fest, he didn't hesitate, you know, uh, That's great. so, uh, so yeah, so he'll be there and, uh, you yeah. know, he'll, he'll We'll be uh, taking pictures with the spark and, uh, you know, all of that stuff. And uh, yeah. who knows, him and the Tilakon may tie up together. You know? That's what I was just going to say. You just read my mind. I was exactly going to say that because, yeah. you know, Attila, uh, when I, he was down in Springfield, he is so, I can't even say describe him. He just, he has that demeanor and aura about him that you just, you want more yeah. and you know, he's got his little sidekick Stephen E with him, but you know, oh, <laughs> I just, yeah. I, I love Attila. I know he's a brute, but man, he, he, he can, he can go. Well, you know, and that's what I was going to tell you, you know, I am very, very fortunate, uh, kind of like what Jason is with the locker room that he's got. I, yeah. I've got a lot of years of experience. I got the Night Train Gary Jackson, uh, yes. who got who got the nickname Night Train from Bruiser Brody, uh, and here he is. I mean, he uh, he is just uh, uh, everybody needs a Gary Jackson in their locker room. I'm telling you, he's a he's a general. And uh, yeah. but you know, people like Attila, people like I said, superstar Steve Fender. Uh, you know, the big yeah. Texan, my, who is my, uh, uh, classic, uh, champion, uh, yeah. you know, Bob, yeah. Bob, yeah. Bobby D, uh, you know, yeah. he's got a great amateur background wrestling, but he can get out there and brawl with the best of them. And, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. one of the bloodiest brawls, uh, uh, that I, I, man, it was, it was actually terrible. It was, you know, him and a telecon and, uh. But, uh, you know, the guys get out there and they give the fans what they want to see. And uh, um, and I think that's why when they talk about SICW, it sets the bar, sets the standard uh, of what old school wrestling used to be about. Um, I think that's why, you know, it, it's kind of full circle, you know, the, where we run our monthly show at now, the Bell Claire Fairgrounds, you know, that's back yeah. where I ran in the late seventies. That's where I first brought Bruiser Brody and Jerry Blackwell and Dick Murdoch and Tojo Yamamoto and Gypsy Joe and Frank Morrell, the angel, people like that. Uh, and to think here we are, we're back there running at the same fairgrounds, uh, bringing in just, uh, generations of uh, other families that uh, their parents used to come and watch us there and yeah. uh, i mean i've got a family that comes uh, the, the bullion family uh that's their family for years for 40 years has followed us and wow. they're still coming they're still uh you know they'll have anywhere from 10 to 12 seats every month at that show wow. and uh and, you know, people like Dolores and Kenny, uh, I mean, an older couple that started coming to our little community center in East Crondelet and just fell in love with the, hey, this is old school. This is what we remembered. They still come. And now they're bringing 10, 12 people with them every month, you know. And, there you go, yeah. Uh, and, and, and those are the people that, you know, uh, that really – truly enjoy it and then they watch the sunday night show and keep up with the episodes and then they come to the tv tapings and because what they get to see at the tv tapings is how it's basically all put together you know uh and plus if you come to that show on saturday night you get to come to the tv tapings for free and uh so there you go yeah day you get you get to see four shows taped and uh you know uh so it's about a three 
three, three and a half hour uh, Sunday afternoon because, you know, by the time you get it all put together and not counting the commercial time you put in, but, uh, yeah. but then people love seeing herself on TV, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, um, the only thing we, uh, we don't do is like they used to do a wrestling at the chase. They used to do that, uh, one camera shoot and then they only shot three sides of the, the ring. And then between each episode, you would rotate from this side of the ring to the other side of the ring. And, uh, yeah. of course, Larry and Mickey, Gary, Jola would wear, uh, they'd have three different wardrobe tra- changes, uh, different sports coats and uh to make it look like they had a different uh you know, they did have a different set on every, every week so right. we're sitting there in the same sports coat or uh, suit coat <laughs> week after week you know but uh we don't we don't go that yeah. far but the action takes you back um yeah. you know it, it's just uh it's it's classic the way it's done i i've had people that's been in the business for a long long time to watch our show and call me mm-hmm. and said and i asked them critique me critique what we need those <laughs> we, we ain't got no place to start you know uh because yeah. you're when yeah you don't have the the uh uh million dollar lights and uh yeah. all the multi cameras that you know we do a two camera shoot and uh they said but man to tell the story that you're telling that's all you need you know yeah. and uh, you know it's in a little little uh studio studio setup and uh uh, the guys are having fun. They show up and we have our pre TV meeting and, uh, they're all talking about what happened the night before at the show. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of, a lot of camaraderie. And that's what I yeah. said. I, I mean, I think we, the one night we added up, I mean, a couple of hundred hours, a, a years of experience we've got in our locker room, you know, wow. and then, and then when Jason yeah. Jones comes up or he sends up, you know, his guys, uh, uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's an exposure for them. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and I, I'm happy to call Jason a friend. He's been a friend a long, long time. And, uh, yeah. uh, I wish he, uh, uh, we're trying to get our dates together to where we can even exchange different boys more, but you know, you got to yeah. do what you do, you know? So, yeah. but I think what him and I have shown in uh, a couple of the other promotions that I work with that if promotions really want to if they can really put their egos aside yeah. you can make it better for if if we make it better for the business we make it better mm-hmm. for the fans then mm-hmm. then everybody benefits from it you know yeah. um oh, yeah. we're far enough away to where you can run the same storyline or at least the storylines can uh, help one another right, right. Um, i mean can't you see a match between jason jones and attila khan I can. It'd be. Would that not be a great Ooh. match? Yeah, that would. I tell you, I was so. When I first saw that, it was what a year about a year ago when you guys started kind of merging oh, together. Oh, when I saw that, when I went into Springfield and I saw you and I saw some of your guys, I was like, "Yes, finally, somebody." The light bulb went off and somebody and they said, let's bring our talent together. I was so excited and I was, I mean, it was a great card. And the last card you all did together here in Springfield was, was another great card. And yeah, well, and that's what I like about Jason and a couple of these other promoters I work with, you know, they'll call me and say, Hey, what are you doing with so-and-so? And, and I'll tell them, they'll say, okay, we'd like to get them down here. We want to make sure we don't disrupt anything. And, uh, and that's how it's done. That's how territorial yeah. wrestling was done back in the day. But, right. but like I said, uh, you know, the, one of the other questions that I get asked all the time is, you know, uh, what, why is wrestling changed so much? And I tell them, you know, guys, wrestling has not changed. A headlock, is still a headlock, a wrist lock is still a wrist lock. A takedown is still a takedown. What has changed in this business is a three letter word called ego. And uh, <laughs> guys have to check yeah. their ego at the locker room door. Uh, they have to understand it's a business. It's nothing personal. Uh, you know, everybody wants to be uh, 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 the champ. Everybody wants to run around with belts. And uh, and my yeah. guys, just kind of the opposite. My guys come in and say, hey, what is best for the business? What are, 
how do we send the fans home and wanting them to come back to see us uh, because you know we do uh, we do other shows i mean we're booked up pretty solid for the rest of the year yeah. i mean october yeah. and september we don't have a weekend off uh wow. and and it's for nonprofit organizations you know that we help school organizations churches yeah. uh police fire departments uh and these this is repeat customers i mean we don't run out and rent the local uh, uh, VFW hall. Uh, I mean, if a VFW or American Legion wants to raise money, we're more than glad to help them. But we right. don't have to go out and rent a hall just to have a wrestling match. Our, our shows mm-hmm. are, you know, are booked a year in advance usually. And wow. uh, some of these organizations we've been going back to for 20 plus years, uh, helping them raise money. And yeah. so... That's what you call repeat business. You know, they're calling you, they're calling you back for a reason. It's usually because yeah. you give them a good product. And, yeah. uh, and you know, every, the other question I get asked is how much longer are you going to do it? And I said, well, you know, I'm 71 years old and, uh, I can tell you the, uh, the gas in the tank is, uh, uh getting to the E, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but, but I'm having, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still having fun with it. And, uh, that's what, Larry always told me, he said, you know, when it quits being fun, then you'll know. Yeah. Or, or when you start drawing 30, 35 people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. No, I don't think that's going to happen with you. And, and, you know, you brought up a good point about organizations calling you. That's, to me, uh, a lost art in the, in the big, you know, the, the bigger promotions. They don't do that anymore where before back in the day if an organization called let's say sam hey we want to we'd like you guys to put on a show for us we're trying to raise money for such and such and it's legit sam would probably okay yeah we'll send so and so we'll put this up for you and we'll get yeah you know that don't happen anymore not at that not at the big level that's no it's all about like you said egos and money and and i'm not saying money isn't important it is but it's also giving back to your communities where you work out of too so well yeah and and that's what i said it's 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 so important to because i tell everybody you know wrestling it's and i've always used the uh um uh an analogy of it's like baking the cake you got to have the right ingredients uh to make yeah. a good cake and that all starts with having you know uh, a good locker room you got to have good fans and uh you know a good location uh and if you've got those ingredients then you'll you'll have a good cake and uh um you know, I've tried to explain that to some of the uh, promotions uh, that run over here in our area that, I mean, I got them, they want to run five, 10 miles away from where we run. And, uh, you know, and, and they don't, they don't respect the territory. You know, back in the day, you didn't run that. If you right. ran that close to another promotion that was already established, there was a war and there was a real war. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, nowadays they think it's okay for you to work for me tonight as my big heel and then next weekend you work for them five miles away and you're you know you're the opposite in the fan yeah. you're drawing from the same fan base and so the fans are saying wait a minute i just saw you down there plus you know the ticket price down there is such and such and uh yeah uh, so there's there's oversaturation but again if the people's got a money the money and they want to go spend it and watch so uh, subpar uh, talent uh action i uh, i don't have a problem with that they can spend their money any way they want to uh you know the the one thing that i am i, I started tightening up i've had guys that and they're young guys that want to come in and they don't get the push they think they deserve and then they're going to go, well, we're going to go and uh, uh, spread our wings and sow our oats down the road somewhere else. And they re- really just leave the phone rings back and, hey, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> the grass isn't greener over here. Well, and and I've always been one to, hey, OK, no problem. You know, it's it's the wrestling. It's 20 whatever year it is. And uh, but I am tightening up those reins because it's not fair to the guys that are staying and, and going through the tough times and the good times. Yeah. and. Uh, you know, you got to find yourself a home base. And, uh, 
And I mean, I want people, I, you know, especially with the training academy. I mean, we got a, a, a young group, uh, tag team called the Top Guns. It's just on fire. And, uh, you know, yeah. in fact, one of the one of the guys got picked up by OBW. And uh, okay. so, I mean, I'm excited about I'm happy for him. Uh, yeah. The Top Guns, I mean, they've been to Memphis. They've been down to Arkansas. Uh, they've yeah. been down here to, uh, to uh, Jason's. And uh, yeah. Uh, They've been up to Ohio and places like that. So I want them to spread their wings, but some of these organizations think spreading their wings is five, 10 miles down the road. And that's mm -hmm. not what I'm talking about. That's not road trips. Right. Uh, if you want to take a road trip, I tell them, get in your car and go to Chicago or, you know, go to Arkansas, go to Tennessee, you know, right. go out to Kansas city. Those are your road trips, not five or 10 miles down the road and, right. and, get, in front of a, and get in front of a different audience. And then you'll find out just how good you really are. You know, right yeah. now you're in your own zone and your comfort. And uh, when right. you got to go out there and get in front of a different crowd, uh, you got to you got to perform a lot uh, differently. And uh, yeah. and that's what the Top Guns have done. I mean, Brandon Beretta and Joey Benetti, uh, they, they're getting a taste of that. And like I said, Brandon yeah. got up by OBW. And I'm I am really excited for that uh, because. You know, one, he's a very respectful individual. He's never going to forget where he come from. He re he respects Bob Orton and the trainers that was there that helped him uh, learn. I mean, uh, I told him, I said, you, you need to take that picture when he first started and hang it up in the gym and take a picture of him now and show the new classes. Hey, this is what he looked like when he come in here. This is what he is now. And that's yeah. because of hard work. And uh, yeah. so it's a little inspiration for him, you know. And now he, he shows up down at the gym and works out with some of the new people, you know, and uh, he's only been in it a couple of years, but uh, Bob and the trainers had so much confidence in him that uh, uh, he can get in there and show them how to not have to worry about getting those bumps and bruises, you know, <laughs> if you do it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, because I don't know, but I get a kick out of Bob when I stop in down there on a Tuesday or Thursday night and he's there and he'd take them glasses off and that hat climb up in that ring i'm thinking oh boy yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to school. yeah but he, yeah. he's you know they're training him the right way and uh yeah um we've yeah. got a uh, we've got a young lady down there brian and i'm going to tell you uh it takes a lot to impress me yeah uh, but this young lady uh i'm, I'm going to sign her to a contract because <laughs> i don't want nobody to get their oh. hands on her she wow. is She's going to be awesome. I'm telling you. Uh, well, that's good she, to hear. Uh, yeah, she uh, she is going to uh, set set it on fire. Uh, she's got everything. She's got all the ingredients. She's she's got the. Uh, she was a little bashful on her interviews at first, but now uh, I I pulled her aside and I said, you know, this is my plans for you. This is what I need you to do. This is how I need you to act. And. And so mm -hmm. part of their homework is they have to do a promo uh, every week and post it up on our workers page. And, uh, okay. and, and you can just see week after week, the fire is there. Uh, yeah. And I mean, she's a, she, I think she's six foot, six foot three, six foot four. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, she's uh yeah, she's going to be a, she's going to be a barn burner as they say. And uh, as long as Good. she, and uh, agile and uh, got the big boot she can deliver and uh, she's uh, she's going to be uh, she's going to be uh, something something to watch. Well, I, I, predict, I predict that if the good Lord's willing and the creek don't rise, that she's going to be on a main stage uh, in the future. Well, coming from you, that says a lot, her because yeah, like you said. It takes a lot to, especially when they're just getting in. I mean, that, yeah. that says yeah. a lot. Yeah, that says a lot. I think she's a, uh, you know, she never misses training. And I mean, Good. she comes ready to go. And uh, awesome. she's only been training probably seven, eight months now. And uh, the stuff that they've pushed her through and, you know, the mm -hmm. getting her cardio going and, uh, uh yeah. You know, she's she's not bashful about getting in there and, and doing it all. And uh, uh, the timidness that she had at first, like anybody else, uh, yeah. that's all out the door now. She's one of the boys, I'm telling you. <laughs> you want to fight? Come on, it's on. <laughs> so, that's great. Yeah, it's going to be great. That's, I'm excited about that, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, well, I want to thank you for coming on here and and talking with me about all the stuff that's going on with you, this fan fest. I'm going to have all that information, folks, on uh, the, in the description of this podcast. Get your if you haven't got a ticket for this fan fest, it's uh, what is it? I think it's forty dollars for the fan fest and, and twenty five, but you can get the deal for sixty for the whole thing. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, it's a bundle. You can go on uh, SICW.org and get it right org. off. Packages you, out. Yeah. 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 It's very reasonable, and and, and that's yeah, the well, other. Thing. A lot yeah. of people says, "Herb, you got to raise the price," you know. And uh, no, I, I I know my uh, fan base, and uh, you do. I, I yeah, I may be able to raise it more, and people would pay it, but then they don't have the money to come in and buy the goods from the boys. Exactly, and, and, and that's you know, I and without the boys being there, you don't have no fan fest, and uh, right. I want everybody to to come and yeah. be able to spend their money wisely, and yeah. you know, if, if they can if they can get ten autographs from people, uh, you know, or whatever it may be, uh, yeah. I'm happy. I mean, that was one of the things last week. I had people come up show me, man, I was able to get this, this, and this. Man, I didn't hardly spend anything, you know. Yeah. So uh, I, I give the boys um, a lot of credit for that. They they keep their yeah. prices pretty reasonable, and yeah. uh, and oh, yeah. and everybody everybody was took time and talked with the fans, and and I think that's what uh, one of the the biggest compliments I got was is nobody was in a hurry. Everybody just kind of hey, you know, uh, yeah take our time but uh we'll be a little bit tighter because of the uh uh the six people being inducted and in a couple of surprises right. uh i think we got to uh, make room for that and uh yeah. just everybody remember come and see uh if you don't come for anything else come for the st louis wrestling hall of fame induction to see cowboy bob orton get inducted because his entire family will be there uh watching <laughs> That's a hint, folks. That's a big hint. Yeah. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, SICW owner, promoter, legend, Mr. Floor Herb sweeper, Simmons. Floor sweeper, trash can empty here. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir, for coming Brian, on. Brian, really Brian, appreciate it was it. my pleasure, my honor. Anytime I can come on, yeah. uh, I, I really appreciate it. You do a great job keeping the Thank word out you. there. Mm -hmm. and, um I, I i know i'll see you uh on you um 17th and 18th and uh yeah, be, uh be back there. down in springfield when jason's down here next time you'll see me there i'm i'm looking forward to it and folks get your tickets go to sacw.org get your tickets and herb one more time thank you for coming on appreciate it folks if you're watching thank you if you're listening thank you if you haven't subscribed please do so and we will talk to you soon